Okay, this video is meant to supplement our review for Algebra 2 um, while we're preparing for our test this Thursday. Um, in class on Tuesday, we got through most of the problems in our review, but we didn't quite uh, have time to talk about this word problem here. So as we see, we've got a container ship that leaves Hawaii and travels east. Two hours later, an aircraft carrier left, and it's traveling five miles an hour faster in an effort to catch up to that container ship. After six hours, the aircraft carrier finally caught up, and our objective here, our goal, is to find how fast the container ship was moving. Now, what would be particularly helpful in this case is to remember this old formula that the distance an object can travel is equal to the rate at which it travels times the length of time that it travels at that speed. And so this is not really given to us in the problem, but it is implied to be true. Um, if we see an issue like this on our test this week, I'll be sure to, to supply this uh, prior knowledge. Now I call upon this because we can use the information that was uh, provided in a modified form of, of this equation to help represent um, this scenario. Now before I actually get into the equation, I do want to show something here uh, that may help. So we've got this aircraft carrier that um, traveled for six hours. So I'm just going to draw six little arrows and I'm trying to make them the same length because that length of the arrow is representing the speed at which the aircraft carrier is moving. And so we've got six of these hours, six hours that the aircraft carrier was moving along. And the cargo ship had a head start. It, it jumped out ahead. It actually had eight hours of travel, again because it left two hours before this aircraft carrier. But it was moving more slowly, so the arrows that I draw here have to be a little bit shorter. And moreover, the goal is that both of these sets of arrows end at the same position. So this guy's arrow, one, two, three, four, oops, five, six, seven. Now this may not be a great illustration here because actually these arrows, while they're shorter, each one is a little bit shorter than the blue ones. I really want to emphasize here that this guy had a two hour head start. So maybe if I stretch it out this way, the, the difference between the two um, right here is supposed to represent that two hour head start. So um, we've got the container ship that started early. Here's the ship and here's the aircraft carrier. Uh, they both ended up in the same spot and each one was traveling at a different speed. This diagram doesn't really have anything to do with the equations themselves, but it's uh, one way to visualize exactly what's happening here. We have two different ships that would require two different equations, but since they end up in the same location, those two equations are ultimately equivalent to one another. And if we set them equal to each other, we can then solve using the same process that we had been throughout uh, earlier questions in this review. So as far as the algebra goes, I'll make this note here. The aircraft carrier traveled for six hours at some unknown rate. So I'm going to write that as r times six uh, because that's rate times time. But more commonly, we usually write this as six r. That equation represents how far the aircraft carrier has traveled. Now the cargo ship has a rate that is five miles per hour slower than the aircraft carrier. So these two R's are the same thing. They represent the same thing. When we're talking about the uh, cargo ship, however, we need to re recognize that the ship is five miles per hour slower because we were told that the aircraft carrier was five miles per hour faster. We established the R for the aircraft carrier first, so that's why I've changed the um, R value for the ship. And we should also recognize that the amount of time that's, um, that's spent by the ship is two hours more than the time that was spent by the aircraft carrier. And since that information was given to us, I'll just mark that down as eight right now. So the cargo ship ran for eight hours while the aircraft carrier ran for six hours. Um, we can clean up this equation just a little bit. We should recognize that this constant multiplier on the outside of a pair of parentheses can be distributed in we might call the ship's distance 8r minus 40. Okay, 
Now here's the uh, final connection to what we're doing in class right now. All of this preliminary work leads us to understand that the aircraft carrier, whose distance was described as 6R, must be equal to the ship at this point because they have ended up at the same position at the end of this event. So these two equations, 6R and 8R minus 40, must be equivalent. From here we can follow the same procedures as before, clear parentheses, combine like terms, isolate, varial, or isolate variables, and so on. And we're actually very close to the finish at this point. I'm just going to subtract 8R to mark this as negative 2R equals negative 40. And then we'll divide both sides by negative 2 to isolate R. And we'll make a note that R is equal to 20. Now keep in mind R was originally defined as the rate of speed of the aircraft carrier, so the aircraft carrier must have been moving at 20 miles per hour. Now that's not really what this question is asking for because the question in this problem says find the speed of the container ship. Well, that's no problem because we know that the rate of the container ship is 5 miles an hour slower than that. So 20 minus 5, of course, is 15 miles per hour. And we've actually got the um, resulting speed for both components, which is good to know. Uh, but this is the particular one that we're asking for specifically. Now, of course, there may be other methods that can be used um, correctly to solve this equation, uh, which would be fine by me if you show uh, something different on your test. Just make sure that it's mathematically correct and um, illustrate or, or uh, display all of the steps that you would have gone through solving that. And, of course, you will earn credit. Now, I also wanted to quickly revisit number 10 because this is a problem that we, we rushed through. Uh, we skipped 9 and, and talked about number 10. What I'd like to remind you of is that each of these equations can be rewritten into slope-intercept form if we get y by itself. And if we work with a slope-intercept form of an equation, we can graph it more easily and ultimately find the location where the two points intersect. Now I'm working off the answer key here so you can see what the solution is, uh, but let's just remind ourselves how we get there. So I'm going to switch ink colors just to make this a little bit separate from the work we were doing before. Um, this first equation is negative 2y plus 6 plus 7x equals 0. And if I'd like to rewrite this in slope-intercept form, I think I'd like to get the y value by itself. So what I'm going to do is add 2y to both sides. It doesn't matter that it shows up on the right-hand side, but it's easier to move just that single um, term rather than moving two extra terms. And while I'm at it, I'm going to rewrite this so that it says 7x plus 6 equals 2y. That looks more like our slope-intercept form. Now, again, we have to get y by itself. We can't stop here. Even though it looks like mx plus b, we're not quite done. We have to get the y value by itself by dividing both sides of the equation by 2. Now, please do keep in mind that everything on the left side has to be divided by 2. So that means the 7 gets divided by 2. And I'm not interested in the decimal. I'll just call that 7 over 2x. And the 6 has to be divided by 2, which we'll call 3. Whoops. So this is a y over here, not a 2. And if it helps you see things a little bit better, you can imagine that the y was written on the left side of this equation. And that's perfectly fine. Whether it shows up on the right or the left, um, we, can, we can move that to either direction. It doesn't make a difference. So one of our equations is y equals 7 halves x plus 3. Um, our other equation was 12 minus 2x. 12 minus 2x equals negative 4y. And we'll do the same thing. We'll try to get y by itself. Here again, we're close to having y by itself. So what I'll do is I'll divide both sides by negative 4, making sure to divide everything by negative 4. Uh, so 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. And I'm going to write that second in this list. Uh, negative 2 divided by negative 4, but well, that's like a positive 2 divided by positive 4, and that's a fraction. When reduced, that becomes 1 half, and I'll call that 1 half x. Again, I'm just changing the order of those two, which is okay. Addition is commutative. Um, we're going to change the order so that this looks more like a slope-intercept equation. And again, to make this even more appealing, I'll move the y to the left-hand side in these terms uh, on the right-hand side. 
uh, just as a matter of rewriting. I'm not actually doing any math to make that switch happen. Uh, but now I've got the second equation that is 1 half x minus 3. So if we take the, um, the effort to recreate these two equations, then it makes it very easy to plot these graphs. Uh, for that second equation, we had a y-intercept of negative 3 and a slope of 1 over 2. So we can rise 1, run 2, or drop 1 and run 2 to the left. And we can create a whole series of points that ultimately get connected by a straight line, which is modeled here by the red line that was already on my answer key. So that one's been graphed. Now this one has a y-intercept of positive 3 and has a slope of 7 over 2. So it'd be nice if I can run up 7 and right 2, but I don't have enough room. So what I'll do is I'll drop down 7 and left 2 and place a point. And I would connect those with a line, as we can see here, in this answer key. And while each line represents all of the solutions to the equation separately, there's only one solution that applies to both, and that is the point of intersection right here and that point is located at negative 2, negative 4. So we can report our answer like this. I'm perfectly fine with that. Or you can state that x is equal to negative 2 and y is equal to negative 4, and you can report your answers that way. Because when we solve a system of equations, we want, we want not only the x value, but also the y value associated with it. I believe the other questions that we reviewed in class were sufficient, but if you do have questions on um, 1 through 8, please let me know. I'll record an additional video to that. Uh, otherwise, good luck, and we'll see you on Thursday. Thanks for watching.